Synchro's new policy inheritance feature delivers one of the most robust policy-based management systems offered in the MSP space today, allowing MSPs to manage customers of any size and complexity with ease. This all starts with our brand new policy builder. The first thing you'll notice when creating a new policy is that its contents are empty. You no longer have to search through a myriad of settings to find out what any given policy does. We've also broken down policy settings by category, making it quick and easy to find exactly what you're looking for. So let's add a new alert to our policy. Those live in the Monitors category. We'll select the Alert section, which adds this to the Builder. Now you can select which triggers you'd like to add. Let's add one for application crashes. Now let's add another for smart failures. You can easily remove any individual item by selecting the X here. You can also remove any individual section by clicking its X in the top right corner here. The most important thing to understand with our new policy inheritance model is that the bulk of individual policy items now have three states, where previously they had two. For instance, these two alerts represent the enabled state. Previously, unchecking them would represent an ignore state, meaning they aren't enabled, so they aren't considered. With our new policy inheritance model, adding an alert and subsequently unchecking it would now represent the disabled state. Disabled means that it can override an enabled state coming from another policy being inherited. More on that later. Not adding a policy item, like all of these triggers remaining in the dropdown, represent the ignore state, meaning they have zero bearing on what this policy does. So again, adding any single item to an asset policy allows you to define whether this item is enabled on the policy or disabled on the policy. Not adding it to the policy at all now represents the ignore state, meaning it is not taken into consideration at all. Now let's say we wanted to add a device uninstall code as well. When we do that, you might notice off to the left that each category denotes how many of its sections have been added to the policy. Best of all, we've added this Policy Overview link here at the top that shows a categorized read-only view of everything that is enabled or disabled on this specific policy all in a single, unified view. One of the other biggest changes is the fact that policies are no longer directly applied to assets. They'll now be applied to folders that live in each customer record in this new Assets and Policies tab. This is how each new customer will begin, with one parent folder representing the customer's name. This folder will always be the topmost folder and cannot be edited or renamed. Now you'll notice that I've applied a policy to this folder. This is how policies are assigned. Regardless of how many assets appear below this top-level folder, or how complex of a folder structure you create, everything falling below this customer's top-level folder will always first receive all policy items being applied here, and cascade downward. Every folder can have a single policy applied to it. Any single folder, including the parent folder, doesn't have to have a policy assigned to it if you don't want to. In this example, I have created two subfolders, one to house servers and another to house workstations. Typically, I'd have an applicable servers and workstations policy applied to each respective folder, but for demonstration purposes, I've simplified this to showcase how inheritance works. The Servers folder has a policy applied that just enables Bitdefender, while my Workstations folder just applies MCSoft. This is where Inheritance takes over. All applicable policies are merged together to form what is called an Effective Policy, and this is the final policy settings the asset will be assigned. You can view the Effective Policy at any given level. For instance, if I view the Effective Policy of my top-level folder, it will be an exact replica of everything in my top-level policy, which is comprised of some alerts, our native remote access integration with Splashtop, system tray items, and third-party and Windows update settings. Now, if I were to view the effective policy of my servers folder, I'll be getting everything I just showed you in addition to Bitdefender. If I show the effective policy for my workstations folder, I'll have all the same items except now you'll see MCSoft instead of Bitdefender. You can easily drag assets from one folder to another. If I were to drag the demo workstation asset into the backup subfolder, this would effectively inherit everything as described prior and now deploy Synchro backups as well. You can even drag entire folders around if you needed to. 
Once you're done making your changes, you'll want to save them to apply any updated effective policies to your assets. Now what if you don't want something to happen, meaning you want to disable something? That's just as easy. Let's take a look at our disabled tray folder here. It's largely the same setup, but any workstation where I don't want to showcase the tray icon, I can easily drag into this folder. Now it will inherit everything from the top level policy, which includes my tray icon, and then everything in my workstations folder, which adds MCSoft, and then cascades down into this folder, which overrides the tray icon because this policy here dictates that. Pretty cool. Finally, you can apply policies directly to assets as well. Let's use the same example, but this time I'd prefer just to hide the tray icon for this specific asset, while keeping it enabled at the folder level. Simply apply the policy directly to the asset, and you're good to go. We've also completely streamlined the agent deployment interface. Now you can simply select your customer, select the policy folder you'd like the asset assigned to, and select your type, and you're done. Finally, we've yet again expanded on what was already the most dynamic recurring billing system on the planet by allowing you to not just count assets dynamically and bill your customers accordingly each month, but by allowing you to build different rates based on any given customer's policy folder. This brings new meaning to the term power through simplicity. Simply select the customer's policy folder you'd like to bill against and set your rate for each asset falling into that folder. This folder will be dynamically counted each time this recurring invoice fires, meaning you literally just have to set it once, ever. You can add as many policy folders as you like to a recurring invoice, meaning you can bill as many different rates for asset types or configurations as you see fit. And that's Policy Inheritance.